Hi everyone, we're talking about particular skin findings that can be found on the breast and also on other parts of the body that may indicate that you might have breast cancer. We'll talk about all those and more throughout this lesson. But first, let's talk about what breast cancer is and some risk factors for getting it. So breast cancer is a cancer of the breast and there are actually multiple types of breast cancer. We can break them down generally into lobular carcinoma or ductal carcinoma depending on what part of the breast is affected by the cancer. The risk factors for getting breast cancer include a family history. So if you have especially first degree relatives like mother or sisters that have breast cancer, you're more likely to also have breast cancer yourself. Genetics, so if you have BRCA1 or 2 mutations, that can also increase your risk for breast cancer. Increasing age, so as we get older, cancers in general increase in prevalence. Being of the female biological sex is also another risk factor. Males can get breast cancer, but it's going to be quite rare compared to in females. Early menarche and or late menopause can also increase our risk for breast cancer because of the influence of the hormone estrogen. Hormone replacement therapy may increase the risk of breast cancer, especially in certain patients prone to it. So especially in those who have a family history or have genetic predilections. A personal history of breast cancer, so if you've had breast cancer in one breast, you're more likely to also get it in the other breast. Being exposed to radiation, being obese, or having high alcohol consumption. This can be actually an important one that's often left out if there is alcohol consumption, especially higher amounts for longer periods of time. This can increase your risk for breast cancer as well. And breast cancer is going to be extremely important to understand and recognize because it's the most common cancer in females. So some of the most common classic symptoms of breast cancer include having a breast lump, enlarged lymph nodes, so it would be on the same side as the breast that's affected, so you'd have enlarged lymph nodes in underneath the armpits, so if you were to check in around the armpit, if there's an enlarged lymph node there, it would be a sign of breast cancer as well. And then we may also see nipple discharge occurring in some patients, so this is where there may be blood that is excreted from the nipple or there might be a whitish discharge. And in other cases, we may see changes to the nipple structure. So there can be an inversion of the nipple where it wasn't inverted before. So there can be findings like that, kind of classic findings. But in this lesson, we're going to talk about certain skin findings that we can see first on the breast or on other parts of the body. So we'll first talk about some that we can find on the breast itself. So one of the skin findings we can see is skin dimpling. So this is where there's changes in contour and texture of the skin of the breast. There can be skin wrinkling and dimpling. Skin can become more wrinkled than it used to be or more dimpling can occur. And you can imagine this due to some change underneath the breast due to a mass or some other cancerous change. And we can also see ulceration. Sometimes the breast can develop an ulcer that just doesn't heal properly. And again, this is all due to underlying tissue changes. Another finding we could see on the breast is a red and inflamed breast. So we can see where if we were to actually assess both sides, one would be extremely more reddened than the other. Generally we can see it on one side. So this is where there's inflamed reddened breast. It's going to be where it gets quite enlarged, it gets quite painful, so it's quite tender if you actually touch it. And this is due to a particular type of breast cancer known as inflammatory breast cancer. We can also see another finding known as peau d'orange. So peau d'orange literally means skin of an orange. This is where the cancer itself starts to impact particular structures in the breast, including the lymphatics. So some of the lymphatic drainage of the breast starts to get affected. And when it does, it can cause the skin of the breast to sort of have this type of appearance that looks something like this, where we get kind of erythematous, enlarged, gray skin that has the pores of the skin more prominent. And this is going to be another finding we can see in inflammatory breast cancer as well. Another finding is what we call Paget's disease of breast. Now this is going to be something that can cause issues in and around the nipple. So we can get eczematous crusting. So there can be kind of a reddened, crusty sort of skin lesion that kind of goes around near the nipple or the areola. So we can have, it almost look like the areola kind of increases in size. And that can be something due to an underlying Paget disease of breast. This particular skin lesion can be scaly as well. And it's often going to be unilateral, so one-sided. And it's associated with an underlying ductal carcinoma, more specifically here. 
we can also see perineoplastic dermatomyositis occurring. So we're going to move now into the skin findings we can see on other parts of the body. And the first one here is going to be perineoplastic dermatomyositis. So this is going to occur in more advanced breast cancer, so later stage breast cancer generally. And this is going to be a perineoplastic syndrome where we end up having certain compounds being released by the breast cancer itself. So the cells of the breast cancer release certain chemicals and compounds that end up causing other issues in the body. And generally, we can see those issues occurring on the skin. And one of those is perineoplastic dermatomyositis. It's going to cause a variety of dermatological findings, including heliotrope rash. So heliotrope rash is kind of this reddened rash around the eyes. Gautrin's papules, so you get these reddened lesions kind of raised on the knuckles. So you can look at the joints of the fingers and you can see these Gautrin's papules. And we can also see what we call shawl sign. So we get this kind of reddened, erythematous kind of rash around the neck. And this is where there's more sun exposure. So this is something we can also see in more advanced stages of breast cancer. We can also see another skin finding known as malignant acanthosis nigricans. So this is what malignant acanthosis nigricans looks like. It is a thickened, hyperpigmented skin lesion. So skin lesion itself gets thicker. It's hyperpigmented, meaning that it's darker than the surrounding skin. It's velvety in appearance. It has a rapid onset. So we can see acanthosis nigricans occurring in other health conditions like type 2 diabetes, obesity, PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome. So we can see it in non-cancer conditions. But in the case where it is caused by the cancer, we use the term malignant acanthosis nigricans. And with regards to it occurring during cancer, it's going to have a more rapid onset. It's going to be most often found in what we call intertriginous areas. So intertriginous means where skin meets skin. So we're going to find it in the axilla or armpits and the growing area. Another potential finding we can see in breast cancer is erythema gyratum repens. So erythema gyratum repens is where there's a rapidly enlarging ring-like skin lesions. So it looks something like this. So you can start to have these ring-like skin lesions that rapidly enlarge and spread over time. They have this kind of wood grainy appearance. Again, they rapidly spread across the body. And these can occur months before diagnosis. So erythema gyratum repens can occur in breast cancer, can occur in lung cancer, can also occur in esophageal cancer as well. And we can also see skin metastases in breast cancer. So the breast cancer itself, the cells of the breast cancer can actually spread to the skin on other parts of the body. And it's going to lead to nodules, which are non-tender and maybe reddened or raised. So we can often see them on the chest wall. So it's not going to be directly in the breast. We can see it on other parts of the chest. So these kind of nodules start to appear. This can also occur in some patients who have breast cancer, although it's going to be more rare. Please check in my other lessons on breast cancer if you want more information on some of the more classic signs and symptoms of breast cancer, how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. Please consider joining as a member for members only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you again soon.